Good afternoon, everyone. Carisoft Technology would like to welcome you to our Google Maps webinar, delivering high-quality data visualizations and solving complex agency problems. Before we get started, I would like to go over a few housekeeping items. The audio portion of this webinar can be heard through your computer speakers or by entering your number in the dial-out option on your screen. All lines have been muted to reduce any background noise. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please use the chat pod on the left side of your screen and we will do our best to answer all of your questions at the end of the presentation. If for some reason we do not get to your questions, our team will certainly follow up with you offline. Just to tell you a little bit about Kerasoft, we are a trusted government IT solutions provider delivering software and support solutions to federal, state, and local government agencies. Kerasoft maintains dedicated teams to support sales and marketing for all its vendors, including Google, F5, Symantec, Adobe, and Red Hat. Our contact information will be at the end of the presentation, so please do not hesitate to call or email us for any of your needs. This webinar is being recorded and a copy of the presentation will be emailed to you. At this time, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our speakers for today. And just a little bit about Aaron and Kyle. Kyle has seven plus years experience with Google, supporting the MAPS team. He has vast experience with the public sector technology market and is passionate about location intelligence and cloud technology. Aaron is an experienced GIS analyst with web cart cartography focus and is dedicated to community adoption of geospatial tools and solving real world problems. Aaron and Kyle, the floor is all yours. Great. Um, just wanted to run through our agenda really quickly. This is Aaron Doucette from Applied Geographics. Um, thank you so much, Lauren, for the kind introductions. Today, we'll be talking about the Google Cloud and Google Maps platform uh, program, just to give you an introduction to it all. Dive a little deeper into the APIs. What do they mean? What can they do? And um, how can we build with them? And lastly, we're going to walk through some examples of applications that have been built on these technology and go through a real world example of solving just these type of problems. And with that, I'd like to hand it over to Kyle to get us started. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, hello, everyone. Kyle Campbell here with Google. I'm based out of Austin, Texas. And as Lauren mentioned, I've been here at Google over seven years, spent the entire time here at Google on the Maps team. And I'm going to cover a few points in the beginning of the uh, presentation today about the Maps platform, uh, what people use it for, some of the differentiators uh, versus some of the other options out there. Uh, so Aaron, if you could proceed to the next slide, we'll get started. So uh, since 2005, when Google launched Google Maps, we've been completely obsessed with mapping the world and collecting a uh, massive amount of data. Uh, this slide, I think, does a good job of giving you a, a, a reach of the different vast areas of the globe that we've gone to to collect uh, data, whether it's street view imagery that we've collected now in 88 countries and growing, uh, mapping over 190 countries globally. Uh, and then a lot of our creative programs, such as our Trekker program, where you see the gentleman uh, doing the mapping and the, uh, the image capture in the Grand Canyon. Uh, we've done street view imagery underwater uh, in the desert. And we now have a program whereby uh, end users can actually contribute their own maps uh, data as well as Street View imagery. So, uh, you know, we continually evolve to add as much content as we can to our maps and provide as much value as we can to our, our customers and to just the general public that uses the public facing Google Maps. Uh, Aaron, if you can progress. 
And um, you know, when we got started with Maps here at Google, it was it was really a, a project that was uh, guided along the local search program. Uh, a lot of businesses were listing on Google Search, and what we found was, uh, you know, most all the search requirements had a geo component to it. Uh, so at the time, it was really important to our search business. Business, but today we have a lot of other areas where maps are critical to um, to our success success here at Google. We have a whole team uh, focused on Android Auto. Uh, obviously, our Waymo, which is an alphabet company, focusing on self-driving cars. You have to have really accurate map data, really accurate imagery to make some of the very complex uh, calculations in order to safely operate vehicles. And then recently, in the last couple of years, we acquired Waze, which has added a lot of great data and content to Google Maps. Um, they are a separate business unit here at Alphabet, but we do collaborate and share data with them. Uh, in fact, many people have seen the Maps data from Waze being added into Google Maps. We are actually adding that in, so you'll see different things such as road closures and uh, even uh, speed traps in, in the regular Google Maps, and a lot of that data comes from Waze. Uh, go ahead, Aaron. You can progress to the next slide. So when it comes to presenting maps to the to the global community, Google Maps is really the, the main choice out there uh, for multiple reasons. Just aside, it's it's easy to use, but the, the reality is is that we have now over one billion active users on a monthly basis, and that number is actually growing quickly. Um, we provide a ton of content for our users. So you might have seen uh, using Google Maps, you can actually see when the busy times are at a restaurant or a uh, a venue. Uh, a lot of that data is populated into Google Maps, and we have a ton of uh, platforms out there that are leveraging our APIs to create this easy-to-use map platform for the masses. Uh, you can go ahead and progress. And having a, a map of the world is great, but the, the big problem that we try to solve is around accuracy. And I mentioned earlier that we have Street View in about 88 countries around the globe. We actually use machine learning with our Street View to update business hours on uh, locations, as well as to continually enhance the geocoding capabilities. Our geocoder has uh, grown immensely over the past few years and is extremely accurate, uh, but the big reason it's accurate is based on constant change uh, and updating in our maps to keep the most accurate picture out there possible. Go ahead and progress. And, you know, as mentioned before, and it's pretty obvious, the, the world is changing every day. There's different projects that pop up. We, we hear from many of our uh, customers in government about new neighborhoods showing up in their areas. You know, many of the data points that we collect, whether it's street view, uh, aerial imagery, or satellite imagery, are put into our maps, and we leverage machine learning to, to correct these uh, these new areas and, and essentially write these new areas on the map. It's a it's a massive um, it's a massive problem and one that you can't tackle with people. You have to use machines, and we've been able to leverage that very effectively here at Google. You can go ahead and progress to the next slide. And the amount of data that we collect on a daily basis and the amount of changes is is really grown over the past few years. Today we have anywhere from about 25 million plus updates to our maps. So they are continually changing and this is one of the reasons why um, leveraging Google Maps from uh, the APIs from a, a cloud platform is really powerful because we can continue to stay up to speed on all of the different road closures changing, uh, growth area type items that you'll see in our maps. Go ahead and progress to the next slide. But all of that uh, wouldn't be possible if you didn't have the scale to perform and to uh, provide uh, the mapping out there to the masses. Uh, Google Maps platform is based on the same platform that Gmail 
uh, that has several billion users. Our search, which is uh, well over several billion people use a day, uh, and YouTube, which uh, currently uploads, I think, somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 30 hours of content every minute. So uh, it's a massive uh, data store, but also the ability to scale and deliver that performance out to the masses. Uh, you can go ahead and progress, Aaron. One of the other areas that we focus on on our maps uh, and that we pride ourselves on are making them very easy to use. A uh, great example here, you can see uh, the before and after of some changes that we've done to our maps to make them less cluttered. We offer a lot of tools to our customers uh, to give them the ability to customize the maps so they can they can make them as detailed and, and um, uh, you know, technical as they'd like, or they can simplify the view for the end user. Uh, it's, it's completely up to them. You can go ahead and progress to the next slide. And um, one thing that we found in the government space is putting the, uh, the map data that you have from your, uh, your internal uh, GIS programs is really useful when you put it into uh, a platform like Google Maps that people are used to using. Uh, you know, when you create a website with a map for updating road conditions or uh, using it for your business and people are not GIS professionals, uh, most people prefer using a consumer map like Google that they're familiar with uh, because the, uh, the GIS tools are just a little bit too much for the end user. And we found that the sites that leverage our map technology are typically very successful uh, in providing the data quick and easy to all of the constituents. Uh, the other component that you deal with on the, uh, on the map side is making sure that the maps fit and work on all devices, whether it's mobile, laptop, or desktop. Uh, when you use our APIs, they automatically scale to the screen size, so there's no uh, work required to create specific flavors for different types of operating systems. And that's a huge time saver, but at the end of the day, uh, if your goal is to get the information out to the constituents, getting it to them on a map that they are used to using uh, is, a, is a great way to go. Um, go ahead and progress to the next slide. So now I'm going to talk about a couple different use cases that I've been involved here at Google uh, in the government space that involve our maps. Uh, the first example is uh, the city of Chicago. And uh, several years ago, they contracted with us and one of our partners to create a permitting system using Google Maps. Uh, the problem that they had is that there are many different companies and entities within the city that um, – that have to update uh, uh, update their networks and tear up streets. So, for example, uh, the water department, the cable company, the gas company, uh, they all have projects that they need to do within the city. And, um, you know, the city was struggling with multiple road closures. Uh, one week they'd rip up the road for the cable company, and then a month later the water company would need to do work on the same street. And so by creating an interface using uh, Google Maps platform, they were able to provide a, uh, a map view for all of the companies and city organizations that needed to do work within the city so that they could collaborate and easily see on the map where uh, projects were, were coming up. And the result was really powerful for them. Uh, they were able to rip up the street just once to do all the work on the uh, utilities uh, that needed to go in, and the end result there was a huge savings uh, to the city to the tune of $24 million, and that's, that's a growing annual savings that they're seeing. Um, but again, it's just creating an easy-to-use interface for a lot of these companies. And again, the people in these companies are not GIS experts. They're project managers. So having an easy-to-use map that has street view capability built in was really powerful for them. Uh, go ahead and progress to the next slide, Aaron. And then the, uh, the final example uh, was a, uh, a map that we, uh, a site that we created along with uh, Applied Geographics, who's on the call with me here today, uh, for the Department of uh, Transportation here in Texas, where I'm located. Um, we actually worked with the state years ago after um, Hurricane Rita, 
Uh, they they were really concerned that uh, a large hurricane would hit Texas, specifically Houston, and they would not be prepared to handle the evacuation and updating of millions of people in the, the Houston area to, to evacuate uh, to safety in the time of a hurricane. Uh, at the time, they were using a older platform that required Silverlight uh, to run, and it could handle about 2,000 uh, users at a time, which knowing that you're trying to evacuate millions of people from an area, that just wasn't going to work for them. And so they turned to Google uh, to solve this problem using Google Maps platform, using uh, Google Cloud to host the platform, and uh, the, the system worked wonderfully for them. Uh, we did testing at the time, um, many hundreds of thousands of queries on the site to test it to make sure that it was uh, uh, able to handle the load, and um, and we, we deployed and everything was great. Uh, a couple years ago when Hurricane Harvey hit, uh, we actually got the real test, and uh, the system worked wonderfully. Uh, the website is drivetexas.org. I suggest uh, take, you go take a look at it. You'll notice that it's very easy to use and navigate on a cell phone, on a tablet, or PC. And uh, the benefit here for the state of Texas is that they were able to pull all of the road closure information from their internal GIS systems that they're many different uh, districts and push that all up into uh, Google's cloud uh, using Google Maps APIs into an interface that the constituents here in Texas were able to leverage and it provided a huge amount of value. Uh, the city of Houston was essentially closed for many, many days uh, during this time as the flooding was going on and so road conditions were super important to the constituents there for them to make it to the grocery store or just to, to live their normal life and so Drive Texas was a a very powerful solution there that Google and AppGeo created together and um, we have many other uh, Department of Transportation agencies around the country that um, that are leveraging our maps but this is a great example of probably the largest deployment and the most resilient and it's all built on Google platform uh, for maps as well as Google Cloud and uh, Aaron I'll go ahead and pass over to you Great, thanks so much, Kyle, for joining us today and that wonderful overview of the platform. Um, so I wanted to dive a little bit deeper and describe these APIs that um, Kyle's been referencing and that the platform um, is able to bring to the end user today. So when you hear API, it might come off as a little scary as a programming term. It stands for Application Programming Interface. And um, before you all jump out of the webinar, they're actually really meant to make your life easier, not harder. Um, APIs are the building blocks for an application um, that really do all the hard work for you. And you just kind of configure them in a Lego-like fashion and the end results can be really powerful because you're tapping into all that data um, and all that information that uh, Kyle described has been collected over the 15 years of the MAPS platform. So these APIs are grouped into three main categories, MAPS, routes, and places, and we're going to talk about each one and what you can do with them. So starting with MAPS, MAPS is really the visual component um, the piece that the user is interacting with, zooming in and out of streets or a satellite aerial view, and that can be accessed in a few different ways. The JavaScript API for web, which gives you a lot of customization about the appearance of the map, the tools that you have on top of it. Um, you also have simpler options like the embed API, where you input a selection of criteria like a customer's home, and they're simply getting a static picture that might be delivered on a receipt or say a mailing that automatically goes to their house. Um, very simplified approach to maps. Uh, the Street View API also exists here. That's where you can take the little yellow guy and drop him onto the road and go drive around town virtually. And these tools are really the view into the maps world. But it goes further than that. Um, many of you, when you hop in the car and want to head somewhere, are probably using the Directions API through the Google Maps phone app. 
This can also be leveraged in a business context where the most efficient route from A to B can be calculated using a number of parameters. And that goes a bit further with the distance matrix API where you might have a one-to-many relationship with deliveries or inspections, uh, really providing the fastest and most efficient route for a particular vehicle that might have to make a number of stops between the number of destinations or even more vehicles in more complicated situations like snow plowing. And the roads API is pretty interesting. Um, within that tool set, you can actually determine where a vehicle has been based on a number of GPS points that might be pulling every one minute. Um, Google will take that information and use some really smart algorithms to determine exactly what roads were traveled and give you a more complete picture of um, say where your fleet or vehicles have traveled and give you all of that information. And last but not least, APIs for places. Um, this is where Google really shines in my perspective, tapping into that vast content library that they're keeping up to date for millions and millions of locations. So beyond serving up those additional details like hours of operation or um, you know, when the most or least busy time to go, it can help a user determine what services are in a given proximity to them. So this is especially relevant when you want to locate where a user is and give them, say, a list of the nearest three libraries or schools. Um, so using geography as a tool to connect to all of these real world locations and it goes quite a bit further um, with the geocoding API. That's how we're able to take an address and go to latitude or longitude or vice versa. Um, and geolocation API can actually determine the location without GPS, such as information that's coming in from cell towers or Wi-Fi. Um, really powerful when you want to figure out exactly or you know approximately where someone's coming from without them having to input that on a map or drop a pin, Google can help you figure that out automatically. And of course, these also all have flavors which exist within Android, within iOS, really ready to go. So what does this all mean when we put it together? Let's think about some of the services that are on the go when it comes to the public sector. You might have health and environmental services, inspection services, um, public housing and assistance where they're doing checkups or, you know, visiting people's homes. Engineering and DPW where they're constantly on the go for uh, asset management and facilities upkeep. Uh, parking management, transit with buses and trains and, um, you know, special services for individuals with disabilities trying to get around a city. 311. And not to even uh, mention fire and police, these are all agencies that rely on getting to where they need to be with efficiency and speed. And having information like real-time traffic and smart rerouting, road closures, those are all able to be factored in to make those processes better. And taking it a step further and looking at what the end user experience is like, Google is truly one of the only platforms that has these smart traffic, transit, and bicycling layers that um, you can instruct people on how to get to a location, not only by car, but by public transit or by bicycle using the safest um, roads that might have bike lanes and keeping them away from um, potentially more dangerous areas at the same time. And this is a really interesting example I wanted to share. One of the most popular components of the Google Maps API doesn't even exist on a map. It's called their autocomplete API. And you've probably run across this in your daily life, maybe when checking out on an online store. But as you can see here, within typing the first two letters of our address here, it fills in all the rest of the information. So anytime that you're gathering information on um, people are having them sign up. Uh, this is something that can save a huge amount of time, but also have a vast improvement to the accuracy you're getting where you know that reliably those city fields and state fields and zip code fields are coming in correctly. 
So you're not going back into a database and trying to clean up typos and uh, wonder why mail is getting routed to the wrong address. Um, hugely popular, hugely powerful, and extremely easy to implement. So I wanted to point out that Maps is just one component of a much larger cloud ecosystem. And working within the Google Cloud has a lot of benefits, far more than we can cover here today. Um, but there's a select few that I wanted to share with you all, ranging from improved security, you know, preventing um, data breaches, and having access to some of the most cutting edge language and translation tools. Um, are going to let you communicate with a far larger audience as cities across America are becoming you know, more language diverse and even more global. And the scalability that Kyle touched on, the fact that you know, these applications can go from 10 users to 10 million users without much of a slowdown. Um, and of course, the location and geoservices are at the core of what we're talking about today. So when you're setting up for Google Maps, you're really opening yourself up to a world of possibilities when it comes to working within this cloud ecosystem. So next, I wanted to talk about some of the places where we've taken all of these tools and built some real world applications that are currently powering organizations um, and their capabilities across the country. And a little bit about more um, who we are at AppGeo. We're a Boston-based consulting firm who are dedicated to geospatial work. We've been doing this for over 28 years, um, founded in 1991. And not to rip off farmers, but I like to think about it. We've seen a thing or two when it comes to geospatial. And we take that deep experience and bring it to all of our projects. So unlike a lot of technology companies out there, mapping and geo and geoanalytics are truly at the core of what we do. And we've been a Google Maps platform premier partner for several years now. And Google is becoming a core part of uh, what we offer as an organization and the services that we are bringing to our customers. We've been really happy with the partnership. So these are four areas where we've been able to take this Google technology, take our expertise, and actually come up with some solutions, ranging from transportation to disaster preparedness with Smart Texas, helping um, build smarter cities, more sustainable cities, and overall process improvements that save time, help manage infrastructure more efficiently, and keep companies and organizations like small and government all sizes operating efficiently. So let's take a look at some real apps. <laughs> um, on the facilities mapping story, we have Rutgers University, who we've worked with for a long time. They're the uh, biggest state university system in New Jersey with over 70,000 um, between their students and staff and visitors, and they have multiple campuses. So they came to AppGeo and wanted to kind of revolutionize their campus map, going from something that, you know, you download and print out and get lost to between finding the bookstore and the uh, library to something um, a little more digital, a little more user friendly. And by taking all of their building footprints and parking lots and appending all that information within um, the Google atmosphere, they were able to create a tool that people could log on to. It looks just like Google Maps, but it's kind of the Rutgers edition. And as you can see here, it goes beyond just um, the roads and the buildings, but they have street view within some of these buildings and facilities like the uh, stadium here as well. And that's allowing people to take a virtual campus tour without even um, needing to drive and park on campus. So they've been really happy with this application and I think it's a really powerful example of taking that custom data and layering it within the Google world um, with the specialized tools that the organization needs. This is another example that I found um, really exceptional in how they're utilizing Google Maps. This is a 
bus transportation company in New York who are primarily involved in student busing. And using Google Maps as the underlying technology, we were able to digitally transform their operations to take advantage of smart routing, you know, working around traffic, construction, and constantly changing pickup and drop-off locations. So previously, they were in a completely paper-based platform. They print out a route, have to you know memorize the directions ahead of time, and hope that there was no road closures. And I can tell you, if you've ever driven around um, Long Island, uh, as you can see in the picture, their traffic and road closures are a daily occurrence. Um, going with the Google Maps platform, they were able to not only improve that process, but really revolutionize the way they did business in that they could automatically, for example, determine um, the right route to take for uh, getting students to the school um, and beyond that. Uh, from a safety perspective, actually keep tabs on you know where any of these buses were at any given time, and dispatch help quickly should you know there be a breakdown, something come up, and really optimize the routing. And this is just a complete digital transformation of a system that used to be very old school and is now one of the most cutting edge in the country. Um, so we've been really happy working with this group. And. I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into the Drive Texas story that Kyle introduced. I think, you know, it's one of our favorite use cases to really demonstrate the power of Google Maps as a technological powerhouse. Uh, the normal usage of the site was around 1,000 sessions per day, and that increased 700-fold um, during this Hurricane Harvey event here. As you can see, the number of road closures from left to right is uh, just staggering. And the benefit of Google in this case, as Kyle said, the infrastructure that is underlying all this technology is powering some of the you know, most used applications in the world. And what we've experienced working across a number of vendors um, it's those unpredicted moments that tend to be the cause of 99% of the problems. So if you're on a platform where you know that it has your back anytime, anywhere, um, when the unexpected happens, you have one less thing to worry about. Um, you know, rebooting servers and um, re-pushing data layers is not what you wanna be spending your time on in an emergency situation. Here you can see a little bit more details about the analytics um, and the type of metrics that we track for all of the customers on our platform. Um, you can see the normal traffic flow and then that massive spike in the fall of 2017. And there were no crashes or performance degradation, which we were really happy with and they were really happy with. But it goes beyond just uh, an emergency management tool into something that's really helping anyone who drives on Texas roads or highways, uh, giving information on not only existing construction, but upcoming construction, um, letting people tap into that information that might be otherwise buried in construction documents or plans um, somewhere on a city website or a city engineering page. Um, and this helps uh, both end users and, co and companies plan their travel, uh, avoid closures, uh, and can give real-time updates with integration to things such as traffic cameras or um, more in-depth weather data than previously available. So we've covered maps, places, and routes and showed you some examples of existing applications that we've worked on. But how hard would it really be to build something new from the ground up? I want to talk you all through an example of doing just that. When asked what are some of the biggest challenges facing local governments, one of the biggest responses around was increasing citizen engagement. Um, and with election season in full swing, we just had a major primary in New Hampshire um, just last night. I think many cities and towns across the country are starting to think about ways to improve their processes. Um, at the same time, many 
be uh, maybe weary about creating too much change and maybe alienating those who aren't as quick to adopt new technology. So, you know, how do we face that challenge of wanting to do something new and unique while simultaneously wanting to keep it easy and, um, you know, not this foreign and vague, scary experience. So we believe when it comes to interacting with government, citizens should be empowered and engagement should be easy. So I'm bringing you a hypothetical example today of how we could revolutionize a process. And the one I want to share with you is around finding a polling location. So this is an existing map um, from a city here near Boston, and this is all of their wards and precincts and polling locations. Now I'll ask you, how quickly can you find the one highlighted here if you were to live in that district? It might take a while, especially if you're new to the area or maybe not a map savvy person. Um, so. Aside from printing this out and getting lost and showing up at the wrong place, ready to vote um, in the primary or in the election or in a local election, um, how could we use Google to make this better? And how hard would it really be? You know, do we have to be um, GIS experts to figure out this problem? The answer is no. So we talked about geocoding earlier, and here's an example of how it works in reality. So I took that long list of addresses we saw on the previous page and plopped them right into a spreadsheet. And what you can see here is that not all of them are formatted exactly the same. And that's one of the areas where Google's geocoder is really unique and that we can take a feature um, like the Lexington Avenue Firehouse um, without necessarily the street number and the address spelled exactly right and it's going to figure out with a high degree of accuracy exactly where that is so bringing in this input data whether it's perfectly clean or not we're very confident we're going to end up with geocoded addresses that represent that building's exact location this is all done using the geocoding api and as soon as we've arrived at that geocoded address as a latitude or longitude that can be brought directly onto a Google map that's even interactive. So clicking and getting the name of the polling location is kind of a built-in feature. So going one step further, uh, bringing in the ward and precinct boundaries was super easy as well because this data already existed in a digital format. And rather than worrying about publishing layers and provisioning an application, anything created within Google Maps can be easily shared right away. So just by building on top of the Google Maps base map from you know, starting with that PDF printout, we now have all that street level detail, places search, and geolocation. So not only can you find out where you are meant to go to vote based on your home address, but how to get there from anywhere, even outside the city itself. So it doesn't matter if you're working in, you know, neighboring Boston or Somerville, um, you can figure out how to bike to your polling place or drive there and where to park when you get there, all from within one application. And we find that to be really powerful. So what does this look like when you're actually using it? Well, you can bring in the directions and really the thing I love about Google Maps as a um, you know, cartographer and map lover myself, is I think it's one of the most accurate representations of the world um, in a virtual form. So we go here from map to street, um, aerial view, zooming down to seeing a 3D building, maybe counting the parking spaces out front to see exactly what the access looks like at a street view level. And this can be really powerful for people who may need to know all right, I know where to go, but where's the handicap accessible entrance or parking, for example? Having that ability to take, you know, five or 10 seconds and zoom in and see it yourself without having to go there first um, is incredibly powerful. And we can, on top of generating directions, you know, find places nearby. This was a very simple process to go from uh, old school solution to a cutting edge solution. And I hope that shows you that it's not quite as scary as it sounds to build with all of these tools. 
So that leads to um, how can AppGeo help? Well, we've developed a program called Spatial IQ, which is really our managed services and technical support division here at AppGeo. And this is an example of what a traditional um, customer journey might look like through the Spatial IQ program. We'll set up a discovery meeting where we understand your goals and review the platform, um, help brainstorm ideas and develop strategy, provide support, training resources, and dedicated uh, development hours, give you the guidance to understand your usage, performance, and help optimize, and check in every quarter to ensure you know, all the best practices are met and find what really are the next steps. And we've been offering versions of this program for our own managed services here and our own MapGeo platform, and are really excited to be, be able to do, the, to do the same for our Google customers. So how would you get started <laughs> now that hopefully all of you want to? Um, this is typically all it takes to get up and going with the Google Maps platform. And at AppGeo, we are happy to help. So please get in touch with us if that sounds like something you'd like to do. But um, you'd start off by getting a billing account set up. And the great thing about working with a partner um, as a Government organization, often you don't have a credit card you can plunk down, um, which is now the standard for Google Maps and the Google Cloud Platform. However, working with a partner, we're able to provide more flexible billing options that fit your organization's need. So rest assured, you won't have any trouble there. From there, you'll be able to create a project um, and walk through the console where it's all managed enable one or more of these APIs and get a key. And that key is really the start of being able to work with all of these tools we've mentioned and access the wealth of developer resources that are out there and that AppGeo can provide. And with that, I'd love to field questions from our audience. And I believe Kyle's stuck on as well if you have um, questions that are directed toward him. But thank you so much. We look forward to hearing from you and hopefully answering your questions. Thank you. So as we mentioned earlier, if you would like to go ahead and place your questions in the Q&A pod, we are going to take some of those now. And I already see a couple of questions coming in. The first one, does autocorrect fill in the county city information? I believe there are a number of fields um, that autocomplete can grab from, and county should definitely be one of those. Um, but if you want, we can um, circle back and give you a more detailed documentation on um, exactly how that one works. Thank you, Aaron. Our next question here, what technology allowed the Drive Texas app to stay working during traffic spikes? Absolutely. Um, that's a great question and one that we're really interested in um, telling that story over and over. So being based on Google Cloud is a big part of it. Having that scalability um, really built into the platform itself Beyond that, um, we utilize a number of technology behind the scenes um, between App Builder, another application called Map Large, which um, helps with the rendering of the visuals that you're seeing on the map. And beyond that, coming up with a really um, intricate and thought out fail safe measure. So um, should something go down with the original site, there's actually a backup version that can be activated um, within moments, so no one's going to be left without access to the crucial information. So I'd say our approach in that area is based around um, hybrid cloud technology, so utilizing Google, but also others, and um, really doing that performance testing each step of the way to identify potential bottlenecks and work them out um, prior to the real traffic coming in. 
Thank you. Next question. Am I allowed to bring my own data to work inside Google Maps? Yeah, great question. Um, so the answer is absolutely. And we really specialize in this area. Um, Google's terms of service specifically allow you to bring in your own layers to live on top of a Google base map. Um, we have built numbers of applications that do just this. Um, the Rutgers map you saw earlier, for example, uses the Google base map, but brings in some custom data like their bus routes and their parking lots and their building footprints all on top of it. And there's a number of technologies that are um, compatible um, with Google Maps for doing just this. Uh, Cardo being one, uh, Leaflet, and a number of others that we have experience with. Um, when it comes to terms of service, um, just so you're all aware, what isn't usually allowed is taking the output from a Google API and plopping that onto another platform's map. So say you generated a route um, from A to B using the Google Directions API, um, you would want to keep that within a Google map as the display. But in terms of bringing your own data, totally okay, and that's really the area that we specialize in helping with. Thank you. Okay, we have another question here. Why should I get involved with Google Maps when we already have Esri for our mapping? That's a great question. Um, and here at AppGeo, we're really um, vendor independent. We work across all types of GIS technology. Um, you know, and Esri being one of the biggest out there and really uh, one of the companies that helps shape the industry. And um, from our perspective, we really see them as complementary rather than alternatives. So Google really excels when it comes to that live, ever-changing data and bring that into the picture. Whereas with like a typical GIS platform, you have to collect the data ahead of time, keep it in a database, and maybe run your analysis against a static or a flat data set. Um, another reason to consider Google is when it comes to mobile operations, and you know any data that you're collecting in real time. Um, having applications that just work flawlessly on mobile devices and um, are relatively lightweight has a big advantage there. And I think then there's also the familiarity aspect. I'm confident that the vast majority of people on this webinar have used Google Maps at some point in their daily lives. Um, the same might not be said about the more advanced GIS tools out there. And, you know, most people outside the industry don't know what GIS stands for, but they have used a Google map. And to be able to hop on and have that immediate learning curve rather than, you know, all right, where do I click to uh, type things in or understanding some of the terminology that um, is thrown around you know, we see that as an immediate benefit. And again, I think the scalability factor and the reliability factor are also there. Um, with other platforms, we've definitely seen slowdowns occur when the traffic spikes up. And with Google Maps platform, that's one of the few things that um, we've noticed is really a strong suit. So just to go back to the question again, you know, why Google Maps instead of Esri, it's not really a, a either or, it's kind of taking the right technology for the right job. And when it comes to things that are public facing, when it comes to maps that have to do with real world conditions, when it comes to maps that can't break, <laughs> um, those are really places that I would suggest um, Google is your first choice. Thank you so much, Aaron. Thank you. And that looks like it wraps up things for our Q&A portion for the webinar today. And I want to uh, give everyone a moment here to answer this final polling question that we have. That would be greatly appreciated. And I just want to thank all of our participants as well as Aaron and Kyle for being with us today. We hope our webinar has been helpful for you and your organization.
If you have any further questions or would like to request more information, please feel free to contact Samuel Imhoff at Carasoft. His contact information is displayed on your screen, so please don't hesitate to uh, call or email him. Thank you, and have a great day. Thank you.